good evening and uh, welcome uh, to the session i am dr patta radhakrishna and uh, i uh, along with a uh, couple of others run this uh, facebook group called learning general surgery from based in chennai and uh, after many uh, innovative things we do we thought uh, we should start a, a series on my college my campus and uh, that's where we can bring a lot of uh, college mates and classmates together and uh, towards that uh, we um, we thought we should start with calcutta medical college as being the first medical college in india the most prestigious college and uh, the this uh, we will be doing a college a week possibly and there are more than 270 medical colleges in india and uh, calcutta medical college get the prime slot and uh, let me introduce uh, uh, dr colonel baskaran that baskaran is a man who calls a spade a spade and you know any job he takes up he does it so very well and he is the one who we i'm sure been uh, messaging texting you all and from time to time and he got the thing go going and he is a gi surgeon by training and he is uh, working as the chief of gastrointestinal surgery at meot hospital chennai uh, over to you baskaran please unmute thank you radha good evening to everybody good evening to speakers who have found time to join us and especially professor dash gupta who has taken time off from his busy schedule when radha who has been thinking about having a session on various medical colleges in the country asked me i really wanted whether we need to discuss about medical colleges medical colleges are not like engineering colleges or iims because your job is not going to be dependent on which college you come from your first salary is not going to come from your college whether you are from x college or y college roughly you get the same amount of money and i don't think it monetarily to begin with it gives any advantage coming from a particular college but i still thought about it very very seriously then i realized that a medical college may not give you success like iit iim or anything irrespective of the fact whether you come from jipma royal india institute or xyz medical college but what difference it makes in your life is very significant first of all it gives you friends it gives you company it gives you people with whom you will be friends all through your life now just see you don't have to have any introduction except for the fact that you are from a particular college you see the camaraderie that comes from college number 1 number 2 over a period of time it gives you a character a college has a character the students that come from a college have a different character and it varies from one college to another one more important thing which i notice is the kind of bonding that develops in colleges the bonding that develops in a college may not be the same as a bonding that develops in b college most people think medical colleges is just a number in the matrix and i beg to differ i beg to differ because an institution is like a human being a, an individual it has a birth it has its origin it has its pedigree or you may call it heritage it has its growth it has its hiccups it becomes stronger it learns it it has its character it probably has a spirit it gives back to the society and hopefully it has a future that's why i thought an educational institute whether it is a medical college or anything else will need to be looked at as an individual because it has certain characteristics which are different from one institute or another uh radha can i share my screen yes please there is some issue again just hold on is it okay 
now your screen is come and gone you have to share your screen again yeah make it full screen master Has it come? Yeah, it is there, but you can make it full screen, or you know, where your cursor is, play from start. Just press that. No. Yeah, you need to share it again, Bhaskar. Yeah. Yeah, fine, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's visible now. So we are going to talk about my college, my campus, and we are starting with Calcutta Medical College, as uh, Dr. Patta said. So I was telling you why we need to discuss about colleges. There are many aspects of a college. There are certain things which make you have pride in your college. this could be the heritage it could be the reputation it could be the kind of alumni the college has produced it could be the kind of teachers publications spoken reputation etc etc but this is not going to make you nostalgic about the college the memorable moments about the college they come from certain other aspects like the quality of life you had in the college as a student the kind of friends you had the campus the kind of campus you had small little things like some fun in the anatomy dissection hall some theater etc etc so when one day you suddenly think of the college you don't think about your great name of the college but you are going to think about your close friends and the fun you had so that is what makes campus important that is why uh, this particular series is about my college and uh, my campus and there are certain things which i mentioned about earlier it makes you bond with your college better bond with your fellows better there are many colleges which has so much of bonding that all you need to do is go to your new place you don't have to know anybody find out any alumni from your college living in that town contact him they will look after you so at the end of the day there is certain message some fine things you take from the college and take it with you all the way in your life so these are the many aspects about colleges which make everything unique why are we starting with calcutta like radha said it is the oldest medical college of course there are so many first in that there are so many peculiarities starting with the name of the college calcutta medical college medical college calcutta bengal medical college so many other things there are many people who are actually very annoyed with me for calling it calcutta medical college instead of calling it what the board says in the college or what the certificate says medical college calcutta anyway i leave it to you panelists to discuss what should be the way we discuss it whatever may be the official thing but it may be uh, known as either calcutta medical college or medical college alone i remember many people just calling it medical college because the first medical college so it, you don't have to compare it with any other medical college and traditionally we all know anything about bengal anything about calcutta is associated with intellectuals and there are so many fantastic things about uh, calcutta including calcutta medical college bengalis are always involved in music arts and of course politics politics is part of the dna you can't take it out of the dna so much so when most other colleges students believe the three things in college are one studies two entertainment if time permits and three if any more time left try for some romance whereas in calcutta medical college i am given to understand by students that the three p's are prem politics padai or portion what you refer to as such studies to discuss about calcutta medical college i have a fantastic set of uh, panelists and it is my great uh, pleasure and privilege to introduce to them what is important is there are three people here who have written books on calcutta medical college and there are three people here 
who have written about the first human body dissection by a Indian, a Hindu, against all taboos. And all three people have different views. So this shows the amount of intellectual interest people have in medical college and historical events. And let me have the honor of presenting all the panelists. Dr. Shankar Nath is a senior radiation oncologist from Calcutta and he finished his MBBS in 1975 and he also did DMRT from Calcutta Medical College. He is a multi-talented person, he is an historian, artist, musician and he is there everywhere. He is known more for his historical books and musicians. He has many publications. What is more important is his book in Bengali, Calcutta Medical College or Gora Katha, O Pandit Madhusudan Gupta, uh, is a very acclaimed book and I think he got the Rabindra Prashkar Award. Dr. Jayanta Bhattacharya is already here. He is an exceedingly unique person in that he has, apart from his MBBS from Calcutta Medical College, he has a PhD in history of medicine, history of medicine and he has got a PhD. So obviously you know the depth of knowledge he must be having and uh, by his own admission, he is a free thinker, historian, and he also is a general practitioner in a semi-rural area. So he doesn't believe in city life. He is a recipient of honorable mention for an outstanding paper on history of medicine by the Asian Society for the History of Medicine. He is a reviewer for Bulletin of the WHO. He has numerous publications. The, many of them are very philosophical. Uh, uh, it is very, very difficult to understand easily. But what is important is he is one of those three people who has written about the first dissection controversy, introduction to anatomical education in Bengal and British India. Now this is something very unique I check about the Calcutta Medical College, whereas the other two old medical colleges like Madras Medical College and Grand Medical College, to my knowledge, do not pay any attention on to the first dissection or even second dissection. It doesn't seem to be a major issue at all in these two colleges. So I would rather be interested in checking what makes Calcutta tick about this. This is another paper where he has written about the history of Calcutta Medical College. So Jainta is an independent scholar and he writes exceedingly philosophically about the medical college and about uh, medical history. It's my pleasure to introduce my erstwhile colleague in the armed forces, Dr. Brigadier Kunal Ghosh, who is a consultant GI surgeon. He uh, by his admission, he is from Calcutta Medical College. He was there in 78 to 82. He is a gold medalist from Bangladesh University for his MS General Surgery and he did his MCH from Alde Institute, uh, same place where Radha and I also worked. He served in the Army Medical Corps. He held lots of uh, posts. He started as a RMO with Grenadier troops on Himalayas and he went on to become a surgeon and a GI surgeon. He held very important senior appointments in major service hospitals. He retired after a full color service in the rank of brigadier. He is a recognized PG teacher and an examiner. He has published plenty of medical aspects and he has been a regular person attending workshops on GI surgery. Ever since he retired, he is catching up with his reading and he is an avid photographer. My colleague, Dr. Krishna Shankar, is an anesthetist. He is the chief of uh, trauma anesthesia. He is an academic director for DNB at Myat Hospital, Chennai. So he is from Calcutta Medical College, finished between 82 to 87, and he went to UK. I mean, in the olden days, Brahmins were not permitted to cross the sea, but then he went across to UK. So it all started with uh, Pandit Madhusudan. So he is a renowned teacher and a strong disciplinarian. Shankar's voice would be heard in the theatre all the time if anybody is doing any mischief, not doing things correctly. Interestingly, he moved to Chennai because of music, Carnatic music specifically, for his daughter and for himself. He did a diploma of Indian music from University of Madras. He is so interested in music and looking after uh, underprivileged. So he is running two charity trusts with the objective of promoting art forms, education, medical needs, and support for the underprivileged. He has numerous publications, and uh, I am very happy to have Krishna Shankar with us. 
it's my delight to introduce professor soumit dashgupta uh, he is a very very big man in the field of audio vestibular and neurotology when he initially spoke to him i wasn't sure whether i should ask call him doctor or mr because he has got both frcs and frc then he cleared the confusion by saying better to call me professor simpler so that that uh, does not annoy anybody else so he is a consultant in audio vestibular and neurotology in aldersgate children's foundation trust liverpool he is an honorary visiting professor otology and skull based surgery university of siena italy where he is a visiting professor uh, he has been there for quite some time he is an honorary lecturer audiology and deafness at the university of manchester where he also did his uh, msc he finished his mbbs in 1989 and subsequently went to uk where he did his frcs and recently he got his frcp in addition to his professional things he is also in administrative appointments he is a secretary of international vestibular society so it's a professional appointment he is a chairman education committee for british association of audio vestibular physiology member of executive Com council british society of neurotology member of the working group on venous disease of the european association of otology and neurotology he is a member children's cancer and leukemia working group for autotoxicity monitoring he has numerous publications but what is of interest to us is that soumit also has written about this first cadaveric dissection need it's a very very interesting paper i would uh, urge all of you to read how to write a kind of uh, dramatized version of uh, such historical aspects i mean he might as well start writing a novel on medical history he also has published a small book on the short history of his uh, alma mater which is a great treasure of tidbits of the college so i am sure he is going to share his knowledge with everybody in this uh, crowd i am very happy to introduce one young person anik chakraborty anik is a student who finished recently in 2013 he is doing md community medicine at uh, uh, pgms rotak what is of interest to us he has been a leader of the medical college democratic students association mcds which is probably the strongest of the three student bodies in uh, medical college kolkata he does service to marginalized people through established ngos and uh, in many places he has written articles on various contemporary socio political especially health issues in west bengal's most read the newspaper uh, abp uh, i am very happy to have anik he is going to give us what is the current situation in the college so let's start the dissection of the medical college kolkata so the scheme of things would be we'll first discuss about the history the development of the college maybe we'll talk about uh, the various alumni we'll talk about the campus of the college we'll talk about the contributions by various alumni to the society and uh, what the current students think about college and what is the status of the current college for example i am given to understand the neat results have come the first 6th and 10th rank in the neat has come from students who are from come from kolkata medical college which i think is a great uh, achievement and it obviously goes a long way to say that people in uh, kolkata medical college are not only intellectuals but they are also able to do very well in competitive examinations uh, let's let's start the ball rolling with uh, somit starting on the history of kolkata medical college somit thank you very much bhaskaran thank you very much dr radha krishnan and bhaskaran this is a superb initiative indeed so before i begin uh, let me just tell you that i recently went into a heated argument with a colleague who is a consultant cardiothoracic surgeon slightly south of me in the midlands uh, near leicester who is from madras medical college so we were having a drink merrily along and he said very proudly said why do you claim that you are the first medical college in asia you are not we are i said what do you mean and he said well yeah madras medical college was before calcutta medical college 
I said, well, did I do wrong all this time? So I checked. Calcutta Medical College was established on the 28th of January, 1835. Madras Medical College on the same order by Lord William Bentinck on the 5th of February, 1835. We are a week older than Madras Medical College. I was so excited, I called him and you know something what happened? My passionate friend from Madras Medical College went into mourning for a week, he didn't speak to me. So this kind of examples, it gives you the, an idea as to the passion that you might have for your alma mater, which Bhaskaran put it very succinctly. A college is a college which will guide you throughout the rest of your life. It doesn't matter what happens in the college, but the very fact you belong to the college, it gives you a sense of uh, belonging. And I'm sure uh, Bhaskaran, you have got in touch with my colleague out there for Madras Medical College. So can you see this one? Yes. I'll make yeah. a slideshow just one second. I'll just do the share sound bit because there's some wonderful video out there as well. One second. Okay, share sound. Yes, I think we are okay. Yeah, right, here we go. So um, I'm just making slideshow. So this is an overview of the history of our college about which Baskar already said I've written a book and I continuously research on this. And um, it's impossible to put down all the different achievements and not so good things about our college in a slideshow of 20 minutes. So this is just, these are the highlights. But what the idea of this historical whistle tour is to make everybody here understand what it means to be a part of this glorious institution, Calcutta Medical College. So we'll talk about the birth of the college and the pioneers. The birth of the college, Jaintoda is a renowned authority on how health education in India came into being and how health education finally, the entire medical establishment was concentrated with starting with the Calcutta Medical College. So he's going to speak about it. Then I'll talk a little bit about the architectural masterpiece. Now, why am I so concerned with the architecture? I'll give you a small example. You know, the very first time in movie history, film history, was made in 1975 by a man called Akira Kurosawa, a Japanese film director in a movie called Desu Uzala. I'm sure many of you have seen it. Out there, along with the human characters, the landscape was a character in itself. So the whole architecture of our medical college hospital, that imposing building, that has become a part of every medical college alumnus. Without that building, we can't imagine our existence. So it's the, our studies. We went to college every day, we fell in love, we indulged in politics, we dealt with entertainment, we gradually graduated into different kinds of extracurriculars. But at the end of the day, walking through the College Street campus or Central Avenue campus and see that magnificent building in front of us, that shaped us. And I'm sure that no one will deny it. Then I'll talk about a few landmarks, just a handful, and we will conclude. And why are we doing this? This is a wonderful quotation by the Italian musician Giuseppe Verdi. Tornate uh, all'antico sarà un progresso. So let us turn to the past for the, that will be progress. We must capitalize on our glorious heritage so that we can move forward and we can make our alma mater proud. You know, John Kennedy in Berlin said once, when he went to Berlin, he said, do not think what the country can do for you. You think what you can do for the country. So what you can do for the college and how do you build on that? You build on that by looking into your past. Right. So originally, um, before Calcutta Medical College came into being, after the British came, they obviously set up some hospitals inside their own forts. For example, Fort St. George in Madras, Fort William, as you can see here in Calcutta, but these were not formal uh, medical institutions. They were just hospitals for the personnel. Then they started building a dedicated hospital inside the Fort William campus. The Fort William campus hospital was built somewhere over there. And we are talking about, let's say in the, uh, 16, just after 1690, Calcutta was founded. This was around about 1710 or 20. Then there was a need for a formal hospital outside the military campus. And that was built as a center of epidemiology to look into infectious diseases rather in the site, which is now occupied by the St. John's Church in Calcutta, which is still standing. Then a formal hospital and some medical education came into being on the site which now marks the site of the Presidency General of the PG Hospital in Calcutta, near the Calcutta Racecourse. This is a picture of that. And then 
the Calcutta Native Medical School was founded, which held its classes in Calcutta Madrasa College first, and then they shifted over to Sanskrit College. The Jointada is going to speak about all this, all these foundations. So I'm just showing you a few pictures, which will take you back to those times when Calcutta was not a fully developed urban metropolis. When Calcutta was very limited, there was a white town and there was a native town. And there were, there was, you know, dysentery was rife. Um, there was no control of any health whatsoever. This was the backdrop for the emergence of the first formal medical institute in Asia. So the benefactors who actually made Calcutta Medical College happen, they were of course, Prince Dwarkanath Tagore, who was very generous, the grandfather of Rabindranath Thakur, Ram Kamal Sen, who at that time was a spearhead, a spearhead leader in the Hindu Mahashabha movement, which kind of looked into Hinduism again. He was a very conservative Orthodox Vaidya, but he felt the need of a medical education on its own. Matilal Seal, another pioneer and a benefactor on whose land our Calcutta Medical College stands. Rustamji Kawasji, who emigrated from Bombay to Calcutta and the Parsi community was set up by Rustamji, who also generated lakhs of rupees for the initial founding. And the four British who were instrumental in finding or setting up Calcutta Medical College, Lord William Bentinck, who signed the order after a council decision in 1834, John Elliot Drinkwater Beaton, who was a philanthropist and Beaton School is named after him in Calcutta. Charles Metcalf, who was the third, who was not the third, who actually succeeded Lord ben William Benting. And history has forgotten his contribution to Calcutta Medical College, but he was singularly responsible for the practical nitty gritties of the college. And finally, Lord Dalhousie, he expanded the college significantly by laying the foundation of our magnificent college building as we see now. So our college, first the name, our college, is it Calcutta Medical College? Is it Medical College Calcutta? Is it Medical College Bengal? Is it the new Medical College of Bengal? Is it Bengal Medical College? Many people say many things. My take on this, and we had a little bit of debate on this, my take on this is we call ourselves Calcutta Medical College. And do you know the reason why? The reason is because in 1836, Joseph Bramley, our first principal, wrote a report for the general public instruction GPI, which was the submission of all the services to the government in 1836, he wrote his report. First report about Calcutta Medical College, which was published. And I've got that original document, which I can't show here. Out there in a report spanning 15 pages, he always mentioned Calcutta Medical College, Calcutta Medical College. Never did he mention Medical College Calcutta or Medical College Bengal. But then subsequently what happened was in the subsequent GPI um, kind of resumes, our college appeared as Medical College Calcutta. From 1860 onwards, suddenly the name turned to Medical College Bengal. Post-independence 1947, we became Calcutta Medical College, then once again, Medical College Calcutta. Our logo consists of the name Medical College Bengal. And now we are called Medical College Kolkata, K-O-L-K-A-T-A. Now, I can't bring myself to think anything of my college but Calcutta Medical College, because that was what our first principal ever denoted our college as. And I, I refuse to accept any other names but Calcutta Medical College, certainly not Medical College Kolkata beginning with a K. I still cannot call, I'm sorry, I'm being politically incorrect, Bhaskar, and I still can't bring myself to call Chennai. I still call Madras. I still call Bombay. I still call Trivandaram, not Theravada, without offending anyone. I still call Bangalore without offending anyone. So Calcutta Medical College is the name that I would accept. So Lord Benting, the official founding day was the 28th of January. The first classes, we didn't have any premise, but a generous donation by Ram Kamal Sen in a site just opposite the Sanskrit College, which is, now the, which is now the site of the Indian Coffee House, which is a famous hub of intellectualism still existing to this day. It was previously called the Albert which Hall. Is the, which is now the site of the Indian Coffee House, which is a famous hub. So there, the first classes were started on the 1st of June, and then it, the, there was a need for a bigger building. So there was a new, new building was founded on the, in March, 1836 in a premise which we called Petit Jet premises on land owned by Motilal Seal, where finally our new college building came up in 1852. 
But before that, we still had a college and a building and a dedicated library and everything. And Joint Tata, I'm sure we'll talk about the plan. There's a beautiful plan of this college which still exists. And the original faculty consisted of a few Englishmen, but there were very, very notably three Indians. Of course, Modushudan Gupta, but how many of us would actually know about these two others, Nobukrishna Gupta and Ram Ishwar Avasti? Their names have been lost. And two persons later joined the college, Nathaniel Wallich and Richard O'Shaughnessy, who carried on working for a long time. I'll talk about them a little bit later. And initially only 11 students qualified out of 40 and subjects that were taught were materia medica, anatomy, botany, pharmacy, and chemistry. This is the original document, the first GPI uh, submission of Calcutta Medical College to the government, which shows you the original faculty, Gudiv, uh, William O'Shaughnessy, Charles Egerton, surgeon, William O'Shaughnessy was the chemist, Nathaniel Wallich was botany, Richard O'Shaughnessy was a surgeon, and the curator was Gareth Evans, who was also a surgeon, and David Hare, who has got nothing to do with medicine, but because of his colossal work in India, he was the secretary. And as you can see also in the figure, the, the figure which is after this, that there were 11 students in all. Now, Uma Charan Shed, Darokanath Gupta, Raj Krishna De, Govinda Chandar Gupta. We do not know their names anymore. We do know Uma Charan Shed, Darokanath Gupta, Raj Krishna De, and Nobin Chandra Mitter, because they were the first students who dissected the human body. But have we, do you still remember Gopal Chandra Gupta, Kana Chadde, Chumun Lal, Nobin Chandra Mukherjee, Buddhi Chandra Chaudhary, and James Porte? Now, James Porte was an Anglo-Indian. I tried my best to figure out who James Porte is. There's nothing about him, but finally I managed to track him down to the graveyard in Park Street Cemetery, James Porte, assistant civil surgeon to the East India Company. That's all I have about James Porte. But he was the first Anglo-Indian, the very first batch from Medical College Calcutta. So the early pioneers, William Shaughnessy, renowned chemist and the polymath, who not only worked a lot on cholera and intravenous therapy of cholera, but do you know that he was the first person to lay a telegraph line from Calcutta Medical College to Lal Digi, and this predated the first official telegraph line anywhere in the world. Henry Hari Gudiv, who was a brilliant anatomist and a pediatrician, he was right from the beginning. Charles Egerton, who had hands of God. He was the most renowned surgeon of his times, and he was a brilliant ophthalmologist. Modushudan Gupta, of course, he, I think he was the first dissector, but Jointoda might disagree, and I'll tell you why I think he's the first dissector. Modushudan Gupta, a polymath, and of course, who did a lot to bring medicine closer to the vernacular community by translating books into Bengali, and so on and so forth. Nathaniel Wallich, the botanist, who established the botanical gardens in India. And he also very surprisingly and very curiously brought in or discovered the ubiquitous rhododendron plant. He introduced that plant to the world. In fact, the Western world had no idea about rhododendron and he exported this to Denmark, his native land and to England. And now in England, England in a quaint countryside, you'll find rhododendrons everywhere. And I being a very passionate medical college fan, my wife is a keen gardener we have got a small hedge of rhododendron in my garden, which reminds me where I come from. Rhododendron was discovered by a man who worked in my college. It gives me the goose pimples when I tell you this. David Hare, of course, we have mentioned about David Hare. Uma Charan Shed, Darakonath Gupta, Robin Jandru Mitra, they were the first students who dissected. And in 1841, round about 1846, actually, there were four students from Calcutta who sailed to, um, to, to, uh, to Vilayat or beyond the seven seas on generous benefactor grant from all the benefactors you saw, also from the Noah of Mushidabad as well. Shudja Kumar Guri Chakarbati, Gopal Chandra Seel, Bholanath Basu and Dwarpanath Basu. They were the first Indians to actually come to UK to study medicine with the University College London. As we grew, so did the faculty and the students. This is a copy of the GPI again in 1840. Nine, and you can see the significant rise in the faculty. You can see so many new people have been added. And you can also see Indian faculty being added for the first time. Dwaraknath Bosch was one of the first to set sail to England. Remember, he was inducted into the faculty. Richard O'Shaughnessy was still there doing phenomenal work. Now, military class. The head was Pandit Madhushudan Gupta. What was the military class? There was a parallel class which also imparted medical education in Bengali, in vernacular. And Madhushudan Gupta headed that unit. You have got people in charge for male hospitals, for female hospitals, and so on and so forth. 
So there was huge expansion. So what does expansion mean? Expansion means more patients, more workload, more work, research, academia. You need a bigger facility, as simple as that. That building alone was not enough. A few pioneers who joined our ranks, Hugh Falconer, he was the, he was the father of a theory called punctualism, which paralleled Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. He was a professor of botany in our college. Joseph Ferrer, a polymath and a fellow of the Royal Society, renowned surgeon, the first to write about snake venom thanatology, which means the study, system, systemic study of snake venom. He was the one who also founded the Indian Zoological Gardens and was present in the Lucknow residency during the Sepoy mutiny. Frederick Muat, who was an educationist, who single-handedly almost led to the establishment of Calcutta University in 1846, which then generated Madras and Bombay University, the three presidencies. But Frederick Muat has got a notoriety. What was that? He was the first to draw up the blueprint of the cellular jail in Andaman and Nicobar Islands as a penal colony. So we are, well, as, frankly, as a Calcutta Medical College guy, I'm not very proud of this, but I'm proud of Frederick Muat, what he did for my college. And then, of course, we have got Mohendralal Sharkar, who was a genius in his own right, who was a very famous doctor, who was the doctor for Ramkrishna Paramahansa Dev, but he also founded the Indian Homeopathic Society, as well as the Indian Institute for the Cultivation of Science. Kandamboni Ganguly, the first female Indian graduate to pass out from India. Now, he, she was not the first female doctor. She was not the first female MBBS. There's lots of explanations regarding this. The first female doctor, actually that distinction goes to Madras. Uh, it's not us, but she was definitely the first female medical graduate in India. Shubod Mohlanobish. Now, do you know that this giant was a professor of biochemistry? in the University of Edinburgh, the first Indian to be appointed a full chair in a British university. And then he became the vice chancellor of the Wales University. The Wales University was founded in the late 1800s and they appointed him as the vice chancellor. The Wales University still stands in Cardiff. He is once again from our college, Richard Havelock Charles, pioneering surgeon who was instrumental to devise that medical college needs a separate facility for surgery, leading to the establishment of the David Hare block. And Chunilal Bose, who was the first officially appointed chemical examiner to Her Majesty's government in India. He was also from our college. Just a quick whiz through a few books written at those times by the pioneers. The first one is by Nathaniel Valich, which mentioned about the rhododendron. This is Hooper's Anatomy Ved Makam, which was translated by Madhushudan Gupta. This was Alan Webb, Anatomy of Indian Diseases. Now, Calcutta Anatomy Museum was a sight to behold. People from outside India, from the empire, they came to visit. And Alan Webb, who was a professor of surgery, he collated all, he curated all the different species and wrote this seminal book, which was taught as far as in America. This book is still available from the Wellcome Trust. Just have a look and look at the details. F. Ed McNamara, what is his claim to fame? Well, I am born a medal in biochemistry called McNamara's Gold Medal. And as usual, I just wanted to find out who McNamara was. And F. N. McNamara was actually working from medical college, a professor of medicine, who was the first to analyze drinking water in Calcutta from hydrants and wrote a seminal report, which is still cited by the Calcutta Municipal Corporation even now. That man taught in my college. William Sutherland, there's a Sutherland's Prize for Medicine in Medical College. Who is who was Sutherland? He was the first person in history to write about forensics of blood stains just after the Germans did. So the Germans were pioneers in this, but this was not available to the English speaking world. He was the first one to do it. And where did he do it from? From Calcutta, postscript. This led to, in 1897, the Department of Dactylography in Calcutta Police, which was spearheaded by Calcutta Medical College. And Kenneth McLeod, a very, very early pioneer of antisepsis in a hospital was a surgeon who wrote a book, a textbook of surgery with different cases which was taught all around the world. So this is our legacy. This is our heritage. These were the books which came out from our institution. Vivian Green Armitage, you know, the renowned gynecologist, he of course devised the Green Armitage forceps, which is still in use. Poilash Bose was the first Indian to be knighted because of his services to medicine. 
ex-medical college, Kedar Dash and his gynecological forceps, Shobodh Mitra and his operation of the vagina, Girish Chandra Bose, pioneer psychiatrist, who actually physically communicated with Sigmund Freud, Ramnath Chopra coming back from Cambridge, where did he come? He came to Calcutta to set up a pharmacological department. Hassan Surawardi, the first Muslim vice chancellor of Calcutta University, a product of our college. Bidhan Rao, you very know, very well know. And Murari Mukherjee, of course, completely revolutionized the plastic surgery movement in India. And did you know that there have been three people from our college who were nominated for the Nobel Prize? And actually one of them won. I wouldn't call him a part of our college, but Robert Koch, whilst he was discovering the cholera, the Vibrio cholera bacillus, worked in Calcutta and not in Bombay. So if Oscar and Grant Medical College comes and tell you it was in Bombay, he did it. I can prove that he, they are wrong. He never went to Bombay. He stopped in Bombay. He came to Calcutta, worked for about six months in a facility. And this facility is actual photograph of a room in Calcutta Medical College provided by David Cunningham, who was the chief of pathology at that time, who had a wonderful setup to investigate cholera. He was, of course, got the Nobel Prize, but Robert Koch got his Nobel Prize not only for cholera, but also for tuberculosis. Sir Leonard Rogers, his seminal work on cholera and infectious disease and also Vishmaniasis, he was nominated four times. Ewan Brahmachari, the discoverer of urea stibamine for a fantastic cure of Kalazar, which was ravaging Northeast India. He was nominated twice. And Shombhuna Day for his discovery of cholera toxin and rehydration therapy got nominated twice. But how often do we actually remember these guys? And I think medical history pertaining to Calcutta Medical College should be a part of compulsory curriculum in any medical course. And it doesn't stop at that. You know, there are so many people who actually, after going coming out from medical college, founded other medical colleges. The prime example is Rahim Khan, who established Lahore Medical College in 1860. Tamiz Khan, who established Campbell Medical School, which finally has become um, Nilratan Medical Shortkar Medical College in 1873. And of course, Radha Govind Kaur, who founded the Calcutta School of Medicine, which became the RG Corps eventually. So people coming out of Calcutta Medical College went elsewhere and they kind of established medical colleges on their own. What about the Olympic connection? We can boast of that. Lionel Renwick Mehmet, 1936, a fully fledged British, born in Missouri, educated in Missouri, came to Calcutta Medical College, did his MBBS, and played side by side with Dhanchand in 1936 Olympics. So he actually represented India in the 1936 Olympics and received his gold medal from the German Olympic Committee. Robin Bhattacharjo, who was a famous neurologist in Bangalore Institute of Neurology, he represented India in 1948 London Olympics. This is an actual picture of him playing Frankie Soldano, a boxer from America, who in a technicality, which is now illegal, because he was hit at the back of his head and was floored, and that is not allowed in boxing. That's how he lost. And Horihor Banerjee, the father of shooting in India, represented India in two Olympics, Melbourne and Helsinki, all products of our college. So you can see the expanse, the breadth of the pioneering uh, things that our predecessors have done. So as I said, architecture is very much a part of our lives. You come into our college and you see that magnificent building, you move up the steps, and you are transported into a tradition and a heritage which nothing can parallel. I remember in our third year, the very first time, we had our roll calls regularly, and all, of us, all the alumni here would remember that. That gave you the goose pimples, because this is where all these things happened. All those guys worked. I showed you. So it started in Albert Hall, moved to Petticoal Jail premises. This is an original photograph of the original hospital, not the current building, but the one before that. Then Petticoal Jail premises expansion, there was an artist rendition by Charles Wendis. This is still available in Christie's to buy as of last week. It costs about, uh, I think, 2,500 pounds. So if you are willing, the rich of us, I can't. And finally, Lord Dalhousie established or laid the foundation of Medical College Hospital in 1848. A very, very quick and a brief interlude here. Just tell me if you can hear the sound. This was post-mutiny Calcutta when Bengal Renaissance, I don't call it Renaissance, I call it the Bengali Romantic period, it wasn't exactly Renaissance, when Calcutta was blossoming. It was blossoming, it was the bed of intellectualism and everything, and it was a city of changing architecture. And our medical college building effortlessly, seamlessly blend into that architecture. So just have a look. <laughs> Thank you.
about you. So in this city of magnificent city of palaces emerged our college. This is a very, very rare picture of medical college actually being constructed in 1851 with scaffolding. The Illustrated London News covered the opening of the new medical college hospital in 1852. It was reported in 1853. And I'm just going to take you through a series of photographs. But before that, what were the other medical colleges in the world at that time? Edinburgh, Bath, St. Thomas's and Guy's, Harvard, Yale, New York. See the buildings, please. Just bear a little bit of thought on the buildings, right? And now be ready. Glory. Medical College Hospital. So can you see that the, even from the architectural point of view, we have been absolutely, you know, kind of leading the world. So 1860, slightly later, 1872, that's a beautiful kind of, uh, not exactly a bird's eye view, but taken from a distance, you can see the developing area around Medical College at that time. 1875, plenty of shrubs in the front. 1885, this was taken by the famous photographer duo Johnston and Hoffman in eight, when they came to cover Calcutta. 1890, it's much more clutter-free this time. 1899, the cemented roads are shaping up, early 20th century and 1940, where Blood Bank was established. And this is today. This college building still stands. So my my kind of general advice to people who are going to study, the youngsters who are going to study in medical college, I always tell them the first day that you enter medical college, wait a little while and look at the building, look at the steps, look what this has witnessed over the ages. This will give, this will give you the motivation that you are never going to fail your college. Regardless of the fact, six years in your college, you might have come across very bad professors. You might have come across extremely bad living conditions. You might have kept come as abominable food. You might have been jilted in love three or four times. Don't bother. Think what happened here and let that motivate you. And Vaskar and you were talking about the success in NEET. Individuals always achieve individual brilliance, but there needs to be a motivating factor, a sense of belonging. You know, I have always been driven to achieve the success that I've achieved in life by the very fact that I was a part of this establishment. I am a Calcutta Medical College guy. I cannot fail my college. What I can do for my college, that will guide me to do what I do in life. So very quick overview of landmarks, 1836. First cadaveric dissection was performed by Madhusudan Gupta in January, followed by his students in October. William O'Shaughnessy led the first telegraph line. Hugh Falconer, discovers the use of chinkona as a treatment of malaria for the first time. First surgery carried out in CMC by Richard O'Shaughnessy just after his introduction in Boston, USA. Can you imagine how quick it was come to Calcutta? And then followed by JJ Jackson with chloroform just after it happened in the world, it came to Calcutta. And first endotracheal tube was also devised and actually used successfully in our college in 1880 with induction anesthesia. Now, Krishnada is an anesthetist. Krishnada, this whole idea of induction anesthesia was actually born in Calcutta Medical College. Absolutely and agree. That's what I'm proud of, that at least I've got, I'm being an anesthetist which has started ether, chloroform, and the tube. Yes. And I'm proud of that. Yes. Thank you. That's exactly the point, Dada. I mean, you know, when I was researching in this, I was astounded, but there you go. Okay. So 1842, new course was formulated in line with England. 1845, the Royal College of Surgeons gave us recognition. 1846, Frederick Moat, the man who devised the cellular jail, he was astute enough to divide, to take away medical jurisprudence from Materia Medica. And he was once again setting a precedent in the world. 1850, then he thought of actually establishing a separate chair. So the very first time forensic pathology started 
anywhere in the world, let me be clear on this. And if anyone challenges me, I'm going to argue and debate on this with evidence. The first time in the world where forensic pathology became a separate chair was in Calcutta Medical College. Then it becomes the Calcutta University. The very first time in an Indian hospital, Listerism was adopted by Kenneth MacLeod, who wrote that famous book, very early indication of infection control, midwifery separates from medical obstetrics, once again, setting a precedent in the world. So 1882, there was this new facility for gynecology and obstetrics. All the colleges that I've showed you, the hospitals, they contained the gynecological unit with the main hospital, but Calcutta Medical College was the first place where we had a separate hospital for gynecology and obstetrics called the Eden Hospital. In 1887, we built the Ezra Hospital, which was a second dedicated Jewish hospital in the world. And that was after Baltimore. There's still one bed reserved for a Jewish person in Ezra, which is free of charge. There are hardly about 20 Jews left in Calcutta. Last time I found out, uh, they still run the Nahum's shop, which is the famous cake and pastry shop. But in Ezra Hospital, there's still one bed reserved for them for free. 1887, Kenneth MacLeod established the steam laundry. Can you imagine 1887 steam laundry in order to disinfect clothes? Once again, setting a precedent. General Medical Council recognition. Biochemistry separates once again due to some vision, especially driven by F. McNamara, that biochemistry has to separate from physiology. The surgical facility was opened. School of Tropical Medicine, modeled after London School of Medicine, was opened by Leonard Rogers. And the first dedicated academic pharmacological unit anywhere in India was started by Ramnath Chopra in 1921. Girindra Shekhar Bosch, I showed you, he was instrumental in separating psychiatry from neurology. And now I have researched into this meticulously. The first time this happened in the West, in the Western world, was in America in 1965. Psychiatry had been a part of neurology throughout in UK, Europe, and America. No. 1921, Calcutta Medical College was the first place where psychiatry separates under the auspicious of Girindra Shekhar Bosch. How many of us even remember Girindra Shekhar Bosch? His, his brother is much more well known, Hirat Shekhar Bosch, who was a novelist. First ENT department in India, set up by Jain Huda and later by Shottuban Roy. The first, once again, Krishnada, fuel, fuel for you. The first boil separate to anesthesia was important to CMC from London. And the first oxygen plant was set up in Calcutta as well who started manufacturing indigenous boil separators. Ewan Brahmachari is known for his urea stivamid, but how many of us know that he was instrumental in uh, setting up a dedicated blood bank? 1939, before the war, the, the second dedicated blood bank in the world after Chicago. And in 1940, the Calcutta Medical College Students Union was found after a first strike, and it was established under the leadership of Professor Pranchanan Chatterjee, a renowned surgeon, and Murari Mohan Mukherjee starts the first plastic surgery department in the country. And of course, there were loads of individual achievements. These were the first dissectors. Henry Hadi Gudiv was the first Indian from, the first person from Calcutta Medical College to publish in the Lancet in 1838 about a scrotal swelling. In 1845, four students set sail. 1846, they became the first MRCS. And 1862, Shunja Kumar Gudok Chakraborty was the first MD from the UCL and the first Indian ever to publish in the British Medical Journey, British Medical Journey Journal about iodide treatment of an thoracic aortic aneurysm, iodide treatment. So that is still available in the BMJ and I've got it with me. It's absolutely fascinating reading. University of Calcutta confers its first MD degree to a few people, including Mohindra al Sharkar. 1911, so far the landscape in Calcutta Medical College, the faculty was dominated by white British. But in 1911, Diwan Hiralal Basu was appointed as professor of anatomy. Anatomy was the mother and the very coveted of the disciplines, but he was the first Indian. Ewan Brahmachari, as I already mentioned, he was the only Indian who has got all the three medals from the colonial government, the Kaiser -e Hind, the Rai Bahadur, and a knighthood. Tamiz Khan did not get uh, night out, but he, he also got, uh, I think it was called a Sahab Bahadur and a Kaiser Hind. Koilash Chandra Bose was professor of medicine and uh, he was the first to be appointed to the chair of medicine. MND, professor of pathology, the first Indian. Lal Mohan Banerjee, first professor of surgery. And Shambhunath De, he publishes in Nature. And you know something? I'll tell you a little anecdote about Shambhunath De. Shambhunath De, in his lifetime, 
He published in Nature, but he never got the Nobel Prize. In 1978, the Nobel Committee invited him for a lecture for his achievements in his field. And he begins by saying, he opens his lecture by saying, thank you to the Nobel Committee for inviting me today. From 1960 until this day, I was dead. Today I'm alive. And this is my question to everybody here, including Bhaskaran, what do we lack in India? Out of our Nobel Prize winners, except Kailash Satyarthi, all the Nobel Prizes have been achieved by Indians on foreign soil. Is there something fundamentally wrong with us? Don't we recognize talent? What happens the moment 1964 Hargobind Khurana wins a Nobel Prize for breaking a genetic code, the Indians started rushing with joy, he is Indian. Hargobind Khurana at that time gave a statement, no, I'm not an Indian, I refuse to be an Indian, I'm an American. Omar Tashen, Obhijit Binak Banerjee, everybody, they have won their Nobel Prizes in foreign soil. Why? That's my question. I'm not going to debate on this because it's a very sensitive issue. So, as you can see, the tradition continues. And for all people coming out of Calcutta Medical College, all of you are successful. You look at yourself and you'll understand what Calcutta Medical College has done to you. This is a small movie I've prepared. So essentially, this music is Vorak's New World Symphony. It's like as if you are just about to discover a new life. That's what you do when the moment you enter into Calcutta Medical Campus. You see that magnificent building. Then you look at the history. And then you start meeting your colleagues who are the top brains. Because remember, medical college, getting into Calcutta Medical College is not easy. Out of 300,000 people, only about 150 make it. And that shapes your life. I was once heavily challenged when I said, you know, many people out here at the moment, they, they kind of deny medical college. They deny the alma mater. They say, what have I learned in medical college? Nothing. I said, it's not important what you have learned. It's important what you have got from medical college. And as Bhaskaran rightly said, it's the camaraderie. It's the sheer belonging. It's a tradition. It's walking those steps where these giants walked. It's looking at that building, which obscures the sky that makes you feel you are a person of Calcutta Medical College and you will not fail her. Regardless of whatever, you will make her name shine. And finally, my last slide, if you look, want to look into your monument, if you look into your monument of tradition and heritage which defines us, all you need to do is just to look around and find that you belong to this brilliant and the greatest institution. Thank you very much, Bhaskaran, and everybody for your time. So much, uh, thank you very much. It's a brilliant talk on history of uh, Calcutta Medical College. You made history fun, first of all. Thank you. And, and you re-emphasize the fact that history gives you identity. You re-emphasize the fact that history also makes you a better citizen. And it also encourages you and craves, encourages you to crave for improving your life in all spheres because once you have a better understanding about what you actually came from, will actually lead you to a better place. Thank you very much. It was brilliant. And I am very grateful that you gave this talk. Uh, Jainta Da is there. I would like you to talk about some forgotten history of Calcutta Medical College. So you will have to switch on. You are uh, muted. Unmute yourself. Yeah, excellent. Am I audible? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, sure. Actually, uh, Sumit has swept us all. Such an excellent presentation. I differ with some of his views. That's not a, not at all any issue here. Excellent presentation. Brilliant. Uh, placement of the ideas and the particular focus which he made on his alma mater is unforgettable. Kudos to Shomit. Now, 
actually i'm going to fill in some voids uh, which were not possible in his presentation by shomit let me start with a student's riot in 1851 and this event is also related to bidashagor in the 16th year annual report of the medical college of bengal 185051 uh, i apologize that my uh, laptop is not working so i cannot <clears throat> put the slides here there was mention of some issues of great concern to the strict institutional and moral discipline codified by cmc the report mentioned several of them several of the students were engaged in a riot with the with persons on the outside of the college walls which led to the interference of the police by whom 10 of the pupils were seized and taken before the magistrate who punished all of them by fines the, this matter was investigated by the secretary of the college and reported to the council of education moat was the secretary and as somi has correctly pointed out uh, he is one of the architects of andaman cellular jail by the orders of the council six stipend here students and four free students were dismissed from the school the incident was so alarming to the discipline of cmc that this event was also reported in the medical times and gazette it appears necessary to enforce a strict discipline in the school as towards the end of the session some of the students were engaged in a riot with persons outside the college walls which led to the interference of the police by whom 10 of the people were seized and taken before the magistrate to make an example all the accused students were expelled vijay krishna goshami seems to be the leader of the students he met with dashagur who was then the principal of the sanskrit college and has just finished the book introduction to sanskrit grammar 1851 mowat the then principal of pmc abused the students with very filthy language goshami reported everything to bidashagur along with their suspension of the stipend bidashagur took up the case and wrote a lengthy letter to the governor of bengal however finally it was clinched that the principal was the abuser and the students were reincorporated uh, it is it has been detailed in purna sagar vidya sagar by <coughs> indra mitra anyway actually calcutta medical college had a gestational period or period of nativity from 1822 the foundation of the nmi to 1835 the foundation of the cmc it was the period of gestation of hospital medicine what is hospital medicine it has been coined by arvin akartnet three pillars of hospital medicine are uh, three pillars of hospital medicine are bedside examination autopsy and statistics gathering these three things put the medicine at a different level from the uh, medicine of boyhoof or bedside medicine anyway the period of nmi actually what did was prepared the students to visual verbal auditory and clock time acculturations suited to the production of a new genre of students it may also be all the process through which docile and disciplined new citizens need needed for the state were in the making for the first time in india cmc served with a developed chemical laboratory under the aegis of william blue koshi he elevated this is very important he elevated the teaching of chemistry to the level that as mel gorman has said at a time when a chemical laboratory in an american medical school was rare this course with lectures and laboratory work was the equal of any in a european medical institution most importantly the students were j- just as capable and enthusiastic about chemistry as they were about anatomy and the testimony of outside examiners gives ample proof as to the rigor of examination 
he infused within the stu- within his students the spirit of free inquiry to such an extent that some of his more advanced students formed chemical demonstration society in india in 1837 and that truly speaking he is the pioneer of forensic medicine chemical toxicology he started with chemical toxicology and along with this and other developments colonial science transcended into global science Barry Crosby in his Irish Imperial Network lets us know using Indian hemp on both humans and animals works published in the Transaction of the Medical and Psychiatric Society of California in 1842 where they generated considerable interest in the mid 19th century cannabis was virtually unknown as a drug in Europe and North America within a few years of Oshanis's experiments however it was being used as a medication to treat a, treat a wide range of conditions by many of the leading doctors in ireland including robert grebs and sir philip crompton in dublin the knowledge of science was not one way journey from the center to the periphery from london to india river's journey of knowledge did happen animal exper- experimentation <clears throat> to be used in humans later was first done in the laboratory of the cmc by oshanis he documented these results as follows uh, experiment 1 10 grams of nepalese chorus dissolved in spirit were given to a middling sized dog experiment 2 one drum of mazoon was given to a small sized dog experiment 3 4 and 5 three kids had 10 grains each of alcoholic extract of ganja Ex- experiment 6 20 grains were given dissolved in a little spirit to a dog of very small size <clears throat> it seems needless, needless to de- dwell on the details of the each experiment suffice it to say that they had to they had they led to one remarkable result that while carnivorous animals this is important differentiation between two types of animals carnivorous animals and fish dogs cats swine vultures crowns and adjutants invariably speedily exhibited the intoxicating influence of the drug the graminivora such as horse deer monkey goat sheep and cow experienced but trivial effects from any dose administered encouraged by these results no hesitation could be felt as to the perfect safety of giving the raisin of him an extensive trial in the cases in which its apparent powers promised the greater degree of utility this is the paper by oshanis <clears throat> now another point of mention i will just quickly go through some salient points regarding cmc <clears throat> for the first time case history taking was practiced in the at the nmi titler told his people the people of the native medical institution persons certainly of no very high education mind the term keep a case book of the symptoms and treatment of the sick on the establishment the language of this is left entirely to their own in, own choice and they uniformly write in persian persian interestingly one of the first few indian words which were anglicized was loot in 1827 benting came in india as the first governor general of in of india history and cbl informs us between 1829 and 1835 he transformed a budget deficit of 1 and 1/2 million pounds sterling into a surplus of half a million pounds <clears throat> it is against this background that bentings social and educational reforms must be set the governor general was certainly influenced by the utilitarian philosophy of government urged by james mill before being the governor general benting subscribed in 1826 for two shares 
in the newly founded University College of London, an institution under combined weak benthamite and dissenting control and a forward battalion in the March of Mind. He met Bentham before sailing for India. Bentham gave him his famous book, Panopticon. Andaman Cellular Jail was built uh, with, under the influence of Panopticon, total surveillance of the captives. May I interrupt you for a second? We may be running short of time, so I would like you to show a few things. Uh, of course, there are many first, uh, we will run out of uh, one hour uh, if, if you are going to talk about every small event. But I would like you to talk on few things, for example, which are unique to Calcutta Medical College. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, politics is part of the DNA of Bengalis. I uh, want to know. <laughs> I, 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 I want you to kindly tell us what, how, one, the major Bengal famine affected Calcutta Medical College. Two, I would like you to tell us what was the role of Calcutta Medical College and its students in the independence struggle. Third, maybe once you, once you when we have time, I'll ask for other things. Uh, because I'll tell you why. As far as I know, uh, the role of struggle for freedom was not significant in, perhaps in Tamil Nadu. I can't really say about uh, Bombay, but definitely it was very high in Calcutta. I'm sure you talked about the students getting arrested. I'm sure there must have been some people who gave up their studies for freedom, freedom fight. Okay, I will go to that. But before <clears throat> that, I want to specifically point out some issues okay. which are unique to Calcutta Medical College. Importantly, ether anesthesia was administered on 22nd March 1847, while chloroform was applied on 12 January 1848, within two months after its introduction in London. Among the prominent points of interest referred to were the extraordinary success of some of the graduates of the college in the performance of the formidable operation of lithotomy and the valuable results which had followed the introduction of chloroform into the practice of surgery. Even <clears throat> Professor Jackson had corresponded with Simpson, the discoverer of chloroform. Anyway, and the second thing I want to uh, emphasize is that residential, residential education of any kind was first introduced in CMC to live in the college and to provide suitable accommodation for them, 1846-47 annual report. The whole system of education in India will necessarily be incomplete until peoples are brought under the internal control and management. Anyway, uh, I would draw your attention to this particular part of the report. The native medical students in his own home is exposed to every influence resulting from ignorance, superstition, prejudices of caste and similar means of weakening them. Actually, medical college uh, was thought of as a laboratory free of noise and free of uh, encroachment of the outside. And these people would be brought according to the strict code of discipline of medicine and state medicine also. Anyway, uh, I am quickly turning to <clears throat> Bengal famine. Actually, Bengal famine during this famine and uh, a few years after, Public Relief Committee, PRC, was formed. Chulilal Bosch, whose name was mentioned by so Show me. Chulilal Bosch was the first man to uh, analyze rice and to find out how many rice is important for people, for poor people of India. And he wrote a paper on this. Anyway, <clears throat> so during Bengal famine, 
many people i cannot mention the names right now because i have not worked on them many people from Cal- calcutta medical college went out for really work uh some of them uh, so far i can remember accompanied pcdi for relief work and the <coughs> public relief committee was formed another notable alumni of calcutta medical college was bonofil and other people uh, most eventful thing in the history of calcutta medical college was nakshalbari movement nakshalbari movement actually has topped it a bit about our thinking of history about our perception of history how the subaltern can speak this this is the moot question which nakshalbari movement put before us and people of calcutta medical college joined as a mentionable figure with a mentionable figure including me with that movement uh <clears throat> even underground people underground uh, workers of underground comrades of nakshalbari movement who were wounded were brought to the emergency department and they were treated by the sympathizer surgeons and other people and they were safely returned to the shelter such was the case and as a result of nakshalbari movement as an as a uh, let impact of nakshalbari movement medical college democratic students association was formed there there were actually three associations first mcdsa medical college democratic students association another was in was sfi and the third one is chatra parishad this is the political event uh, which uh, i may talk about very cursorily but uh, but the point is that calcutta medical college is at the same time the storehouse of knowledge breeder of scientific and independent in inquiry breeder of protest breeder of social activities and breeder of revering the past excavating the past and again going back to my alma mater calcutta medical college yeah my, thank, yeah thank you gentle might... sorry i'll break and then we'll get you back a little later i no. i'm given to understand just hold on uh, i am given to understand that calcutta medical college has its own anthem uh, dr krishna shankar can, can you please tell how come you have a anthem and what does it exactly mean maybe you can sing also you are a carnatic musician <laughs> thank you dr baskar unless it's in the uh, rabindra shankit no it is actually a par- uh, parody of one of the uh, bengali common songs which talks about the motherland dono dhanno pushpa bara okay so real nice song yeah and we all join in yes we can join first let me uh, get you on the uh, uh, screen uh, we just one sec hey no it's it's we we'll just join in Okay. Yeah. We we not only sorry we not only join in we not only join in but we stand up as well. I will stand oh, yes. up. I so always I, do. Actually, I have got this book. This is the one fiftieth year uh, magazine, which you can see that, and the uh, anthem is written in Bengali there. Luckily, okay. I had <laughs> read the Bengali version because I was a student of Bengali also. So I'm just so singing. There might be something you can join with me. So who is a, who has got the best voice can start you. and join with them. Mine is not a very good voice. I'm you you there. you are the musician, Nada. He got it. Shato kali jun moda ta moda je shohor kuli kata ta har maji kali shayak. I'm alright. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Shab 
Dr. Dasgupta covered Shomit, uh, covered the architecture beautifully. I just wanted to add a couple of things. One was the anatomy hall. The first time I entered the anatomy hall, it was as if you are entering a temple. It was marble all over. And you had to be properly dressed to enter. You had to wear shoes. You True. couldn't enter with slippers. You had to have an apron. At that time, clean, of course, later on it becomes dirty. That's a different issue. I still remember during our anatomy class, one of our uh, my classmates had a shawl around. He was told, get out of the class, take off that shawl and come back inside. So that was the discipline of the anatomy hall. The second funny thing was the David Hare block OT. Gallery. Marble galleries and for a youngster entering the college on day one, he was flawed. He fell in love with the college on that day itself. And in the humorous side, every batch had one guy who used to faint either in the gynae labor room or in the DHBOT. And true enough, true to tradition, in our batch also, the tallest and the hulkiest fellow suddenly fell flat. He was standing behind us. And then in the Ghani labor room, suddenly he was not there and we found him lying prostrate on the floor. So these are a few traditions which I still remember. And one okay, more is now, a photograph. We are at an anatomy thing. Yeah. One more is a photograph on the first day you take on the medical college building. Yeah. All of them okay. sitting there and you have the 150 people together as a photograph. That's, That's okay. really okay. finishing for each batch. So, so okay. these things you remember. Yeah, we have the photos. We have the nostalgia of the college. What is the Absolutely. other aspect? What are the other things in your campus where you so, meet your first girlfriend or whatever? May I, may I again uh, sort of grab the mic now? The Baskin is yes, shady, shady corners in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not going to be public. Baskin has already said that three P's were there and first is frame, you know. Yes, yes Kunal. Yes, Kunal. You are on. It is... Uh, moment we entered in January and there came the reunion. Within about 10 days odd, the freshers had to participate in a play in the reunion. And tradition was that second year will hoot you out at the, try to hoot you out and you've got to stand it. True. That was my first introduction to the stage with such a vast audience. And mind you, one of the leading actors of Calcutta at that time was from our college, Shubenduda, Shubendu okay. Chatterjee. Means, uh, I would like to add to Shomiti and Jointoda, who covered a lot of, you know, great alumni. It is not only those people which Shomit covered. I just calculated. Just on the offhand, I can say there were four alumni who retired as lieutenant generals, the highest rank in the Army Medical Corps. And as of now, there were three. Means offhand, the, we haven't collaborated. So they are there. Then we have in the field of culture, politicians. How many members of parliament, Lok Sabha, who have actually, I can count four offhand. There must be more whom I can research. Yeah, yeah. There are still uh, Professor Ranjit Panja was there, Mahmudar yeah, Shangovita. Shangovita D. And then, then the, Mondol, my batchmate. Yeah. And, so all of them are there. And now Nirjan, Nirmal Maji is a MLA there uh, in Trinamul yeah, now. He is MLA countless. Yeah, countless. Yeah. I'm True. talking about members of Member of Trinamal. Parliament also, yeah. Absolutely. Can I just interject here for once, uh, Bhaskar, and you did ask me to talk about our college's role during the freedom struggle. Now, of course, there are many, but I will just mention two names. One is these two were actually martyred during the freedom movement, both from medical college. One was called Norish Rai, first year medical college. He was 19 years old, who was with Master the Shudja Shen's uh, army in Chittagong. And he died fighting the British on the 22nd of April, 1930, in the Battle of Jalalabad. That's Norish Rai. And the second one was Narayan Chandru Dotto, who was giving a hand to the riot relief in 1945, 
when he was killed by the rioters. So, but I'm in the process of actually collating all these names from a Bengali almanac as to what, but these two have been martyred. They have lost their lives. And I'm proud to say they gave their lives for the country and they are from our college. They were from our college. Yeah. Good, great. Sh Shankar, I will also ask you, what, were there any people who had passed out of Calcutta Medical College and joined Netaji's Indian National Army? There are people from Madras Medical College who have gone there. Mm, I, I don't. Uh, I don't really often have the information. Maybe Somit can help with this. That is a very, help. that is a very good question, Bhaskaran. Yeah. Offhand, I it's can think history. of. Yeah. I can think of just one person who became who who actually from medical college joined the Indian Medical Service, then rose to the rank of lieutenant. After he was captured in Singapore, he joined Netaji's INA. Offhand, I don't remember the name, but as I said, I'm compiling this. There was at least one. Okay. Who now was we in the Netaji? About the campus. Uh, any discussion? Sorry, I'm grabbing the mic again. On medical college, at least people of our generation will not be complete if we do not bring Professor Shamor Mitra or Shamorda in the discussion. Dadu. I'm sure the panelists will agree with me. Yes, Dadu is, he is the one. One Dadu who was on always dressed in white. Lecture. Absolutely. And now I remember more of Dadu friend. because we are following the same uniform in Miot. White okay. and white. Okay. Dadu was absolutely white. Completely. And we called him Dadu. And he used to start his anatomy dissection class with this A bhai, jara dek ke chalo, aage bhi nahi, piche bhi, daye bhi nahi, baye bhi, upar bhi nahi, niche bhi. This was his anatomy dissection to tell, you know, the relations about all the anatomical structure, medial, lateral, up and down and all. Because he used to say, and he'll coolly say everyone, sit, I have seen everyone growing here. Shukre and and, and Krishnada, the yeah. first anatomy lecture he gave to us, he came and said, name the 13th cranial nerve. <laughs> and he said, what is the 13th cranial nerve? And he said, nervous misfortunas. That's the 13th cranial nerve. I still remember. <laughs> in, in that is the inaugural go. lecture. Okay. And in, what he in, then in said, contemporary, contemporary leader or outstanding people. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, basically, as they said in the politics, MCDSA was there when we entered. But ours was a changing to Chhatra Parishad, basically. When after our entry, MCDSA got worn off and the Chhatra Parishad leaders came and one of them is a brigadier, Ram Komal. He was one of the president of my classmate. He became the president of the union. And that was a time when Jail Singh was brought there and we had this 150th year celebration, everything done during Ranjit Panja was, uh, Professor Ranjit Panja was uh, president at that time. So that is one of the events which I still remember in the memories. And before Jail Singh, there was a dummy Jail Singh who came and everyone stood up, but that was a dummy because at that time it was all this thing. Then the actual Jail Singh uh, came and sat on the chair, you know. And Bhaskar and the other thing you were asking about romance, you know, yeah. in our library, medical college library, established 1860, you know, there are some cubicles. Oh. We have seen so much love unfolding in those cubicles, you know. That's number one. <laughs> That's I, a wonderful one place. One thing in this romance, uh, if you don't mind, I am awestruck with two couples who are there in uh, a live example for us. One is Professor Amna Goswami. She was a Professor Amna Ahmed, married to Pubitroda, who was a Brahmin. They have finished successfully more than 50 years of married life, very happily, a uh, complete Muslim marrying a complete Bengali, and both of them adjusting very well. Kudos to them. I have my classmate, Monish Mukul Ghosh, and who has married Rosina Ahmed, and they are also doing very well. So I am proud of them that we are unity in diversity through even Romans. No, and that's what I mean. Sir, there are, there are instances in recent years also, sir. Uh, oh, these two I very, yes. very uh, quickly remember because of things. And uh, what else? And one more room, uh, today actually is my, actually my cobra cousin brother, brother, I, I think he's his classmate K.R. Shankar, his birthday, he's no more. He was I know Shankar the, very well, yeah, yeah. I know he Shankar, was actually, he was in UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he died, uh, I don't know why, today is his birthday. So he's one of the brilliant, uh, you know, he would have been if he was alive today, one of the brilliant guy in pediatric surgery. But unfortunately, I've lost him. I still remember And and, and And uh, just on a personal anecdote, guys, you know, uh, my kids, one of them 20, one of them 19, 
we were talking, my wife is from medical college as well. We were talking about what our college has given us and all those things. I said, the most important thing my college has given me is your mother, because I'm married to a medical college, right? And I can't even imagine of marrying anyone else but from medical college. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm a very biased man. I was born in Eden Hospital. There so, we go. Okay. That's there. Okay. I, 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 I want Anik to talk to us about what the campus has to offer now. Anything new? Yes. You have to tell. Yes. You guys are trying to make... Uh, uh, yes. I, can, I, I just want to know because I have heard from someone that the lecture theatres, the viewing galleries, they are all very awesome. British and very special. You know, maybe Dr. Las Gupta could uh, allude to that as to what is so special. Are they still? Do they still exist there? Yes, it How is. Your lecture Onik, Onik will, Onik will tell you about the current situation, but about the lecture theatre. Thank you, Dr. Radhakrishna. It's a very, very, you know, lecture theatre is very much a part of our lives. And there were three. The general lecture theatre, which was a big one, the anatomy lecture theatre attached to the anatomy building, and the CLT or the chemistry lecture theatre, which was dilapidated and everything. The, but the lecture theatre, you know, the moment you enter, you got a smell. Smell dating back 100 years, for me at least, not for me, you guys, who are senior to me. But the whole kind of atmosphere, GLT is the same much. seats, you are sitting on the same seats where which were occupied by all these giants. And in the podium, the giants taught, you know, these lecture theatres. In fact, I remember just one thing I'll say, I remember the anatomy lecture theatre in my times was the roof was leaking, you know, so rainwater was coming in. And our class representative, who's a very famous gynecologist in Durgapur, he was the class representative he was one day I found him hurrying back, coming back from the principal's office. I said, what do you, what are you up to? He said, well, I'm thinking about you. I said, in what way? And he said, well, I have asked the principal to get us 150 waterproof jackets so that we can all do the class. That was an interesting story. Sir, sir I don't want to, uh, I don't want to spoil the nostalgia, but uh, ALD, as far as I know, ALD is no more uh, functional right now and uh, there are other lecture oh. theaters yes sir oh dear uh, uh, oh, yes, dear. Sir. but Me, most here, probably it uh, is there in fact it's unique in its structure yeah. unique yes yes architecture okay. but the building okay. was but the building was very do you good. have any old yes. great lecture hall status like uh, what grant has which we saw in munapai mbbs but only if the new lecture theater which has come up in the new academic building they yes, didn't sir. let me photograph they said you have to take permission i am coming from the uk i want to take a picture they didn't let me uh, sir right now everything is about permission and how uh, attached you are with the uh, with the powerful uh, people i think so yes. uh, <laughs> uh, sir, uh, can i share my screen sir uh, if yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, sir. Anik, be brief, please. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I will take just five to ten minutes. Uh, so, uh, uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'll be talking mainly about uh, campus politics. At uh, campus politics, as I was a part of it, and uh, the changing demographics. So, uh, campus politics, in my opinion, uh, it is an integral part of Calcutta Medical College. Uh, CMC has the most political conscious campus uh, in West Bengal, as per my opinion. Uh, and it's not that people always take part in active politics, but they eventually develop a deep interest, the understandings and found their voices in course of time. So, uh, so there are three main parties uh, uh, in case of our campus politics. It is MCDSA, which I am a part of, Medical College De Democratic Students Association. There is also SFI, that is a part of uh, CPIM, and the TMCP, uh, that is a direct uh, student wing of TMC. Uh, earlier, there was CP, I'll come back to, uh, I'll come back to that part later. Uh, there are different hostels dedicated to these parties. This is a specific, uh, this is a very specific thing about medical college, sir, uh, Calcutta Medical College, that uh, different hostels are dedicated to a different, to different uh, parties. Like main hostel is specifically for MCDS, sir, there are a few SFI people are there. Uh, there is also a Norman Bethan hostel that is exclusively for SFI and Giriwabu hostel, mainly Giriwabu hostel. There is also a small hostel named Bissirai hostel that is for TMCP right now. I'll come back to this part later on uh, after two or three minutes because this uh, equation has changed over time uh, for the last five or six years. Uh, 
so as i said sir uh, i belong to mcdsa during my whole tenure that is 2008 to 13 uh, personally i participated in all four college elections as a cr can, uh, candidate but uh, uh, it is worth mentioning that i couldn't win uh, but uh, that is uh, not the issue i think uh, uh, as uh, uh, but in my uh, tenure 2011 had been an important landmark in kakata medical college political scenario uh, 2011, as you all know, uh, in that year, uh, Trinamool Congress came to power in our uh, state. So with that, uh, CP, the, the, earlier the Chhatra Parishad, that converted to TMCP, uh, that is Trinamool Congress, uh, uh, Trinamool Congress direct uh, student wing, within days due to state intervention, and it affected political environment of CMC in short and long term. Why I'm saying so? Because I think, sir, Calcutta Medical College had a different heritage in case of politics. It was never under the direct influence of state or national politics. It had its own ecosystem that was pretty much functional and uh, I think independent. Yes, sir, there, are, uh, there, there is uh, and also was SFI that is directly uh, attached with uh, CPIM uh, and uh, there is MCDSA. MCDSA <coughs> have no had no political affiliation that time and uh, for now on also but it was uh, but it was uh, of uh, calcutta medical college a special uh, thing that all of them they have their own ecosystem they were independent but that part that equation permanently changed in 2011 we uh, our organization that is mcdsa had to face the direct wrath of ruling party and the student wing that year. Uh, there's nothing uh, negative. Is I'm nothing negative in this, this thing. I'm just uh, explaining the things that happened over time. <clears throat> uh, so I was saying that now various important decisions of Calcutta Medical College, that is the college part, and also of the hospital, uh, are made by and in favor of ruling party. Uh, that is unfortunate in my opinion because uh, when 2008 to 9, 10, 11, 12 also, I, 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 I can never remember that uh, these things happened in that time. But, uh, uh, but uh, currently, this trend is increasing uh, day by day. So there is no election have been conducted for last four to five years. As per my knowledge, our last election was uh, in 2018. And no student union is in action currently. We couldn't think. We, we cannot think that uh, that this this kind of thing uh, really can happen because uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty much a student election, student general body election was a big deal in our time. So uh, last big movement there was a 2018 movement also there because there was a hospital uh, sorry hostel dispute uh, also there, and it got escalated quickly. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the people were uh, there. Uh, I think seven or eight uh, students were there who went uh, for the hunger strike uh, for 11 to 12 days. Excuse me. First. It was mainly led by the MCDSA, my mother organization. I have uh, two or three pictures of that thing, and uh, and it is a it is quite. Uh, <coughs> MCDSA own that uh, uh, that phase. MCDSA own that movement. So, not only in 2018, as you can see that the banner says that 2008, 2011, 2018. So, this whole in this period, MCDSA had have been an integral part. Uh, someone uh, who can question the authority, uh, assert their and their demands and uh, everything. So uh, later on, MCK RDA, uh, uh, sorry, Somit sir, uh, I couldn't change that because it is not CMC RDA, it's MCK RDA, uh, Medical College Kolkata Residence uh, Doctors Association. It came into existence during NRS movement. Um, it was long overdue. Now it, it it played a significant role in recent times. Like last year, uh, they had uh, uh, undergone a uh, a, a movement called Unlock MCK. That was what uh, they were for treating all the patients irrespective of COVID status, status in MCK wards, in Calcutta Medical College and hospital wards. And they won. So uh, Calcutta Medical College has and had uh, its uh, different 
understandings about uh, politics, they assert things, they uh, feel things independently, they think independently, and they know uh, how to make their voices heard. Uh, but campus politics have changed over years. In my opinion, students have become busier and involved dealing their own problems and pursuing their dreams. In no way it's a bad or negative, uh, but undeniably it has affected the general political consciousness Calgary Medical College campus held. As I was saying earlier, that hostel-based politics that was uh, earlier uh, 10, 10 or 15 years back, it has changed uh, drastically too, because political <coughs> parties are now fragmented in different hostels. Uh, Anik, if I can interrupt here. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I would like to ask uh, yes, sir. one very sensitive question, which with all sure. with Dr. Baskaran's permission. Uh, Madras Medical College has started every possible super speciality, uh, diabetology, gastroenterology, uh, uh, geriatric surgery, and so on. Every possible super speciality about 20 years ago. Why didn't Calcutta lead in that area? Why didn't Calcutta start super specialties? What prevented it from doing so? Uh, anybody can answer this. Um... I think uh, I may not be the best person for this. Uh, the uh, so mixer. I think so I can. I think I think I think I can answer this, Doctor Radhakrishnan. Yes, sir. Please, okay. sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes, so, uh, well, super specialism, Doctor Radhakrishnan, as my talk showed, it started in Calcutta. We were the first institution in India before independence, because my history covered until independence in 1960. We were leading Indian medic medicine with super specializations, biochemistry, forensics, pathology, you know, psychiatry, plastic surgery, ENT, pharmacology. After independence, and once again, I don't want to go into much political debate on that. After independence, Calcutta Medical College maintained its standing maybe up to the 1960s, but after that, there was a hiatus. It was as if there has been some kind of a clamp in further progression. As a result, nothing much happened between the years, let's say 1970 on. Uh, and that is because the rest of the country, you know, they were being kind of, they, they were expanding their services like anything. In fact, you know, you had all Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, you had Jipmar set up, you had Christian Medical College Bellore, you had all these things. So Calcutta took a back seat. And I think that was because of a lack of vision from the government part, the government, both in Bengal as well as the central government, that not much investment was coming. So there was a hiatus, but it's slowly starting to pick up. Onik might correct me if I'm wrong. It's slowly starting to pick up again. So as with every other great institution, there is always a period when there is a kind of a setback until yes. they start to reinvent themselves. But pretty much super specialization started with Calcutta Medical College in India. Okay, one, one, one more little contentious issue. Uh, Anik, sorry, uh, can no, we just change over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one more issue is uh, the current ranking. We, we, I mentioned earlier in my talk, most medical colleges are now looked at the rank which it holds in that various uh, ranking list. Uh, I'm afraid that Calcutta Medical College, or for that matter, any of the three oldest medical colleges are not appearing in the top 10. True. Is there, is there anything which the alumni can contribute uh, well so sir, in the government, uh, in the government's thing but as an alumni can you all do something to improve the status of the college perhaps you can uh, add to some education perhaps you can add to research work you can do something uh, this sir, is yeah, yeah, the second issue yeah kunal one more issue i am generally a little unhappy that the alumni association by and large in most medical colleges is not doing as well to the college or to the society like many other things this is my personal opinion different colleges may have different uh, issues yeah yes kunal so our batch had taken an initiative they created uh, people contributed they created a corpus and then within our batch itself about five six guys are there whom we've nominated they select a meritorious economically slightly weaker student and we fund his books. So that is just a small step. What I was thinking once you asked me that question, 
See, investing in infrastructure, these are government, like your question regarding super specialities. These are government policy decisions. You've got to remember, this is not an autonomous college. This is a college like all other seven colleges or 10 colleges now of West Bengal. So the government of the land will decide. So the college really cannot do anything, neither can the alumni. Investing in infrastructure, like any other government institution, we are leaving it to chance. So what we can do is the human element. Today, we have three boys who've come one, six, ten in need. Let us, all of us, in India or outside, like in UK, show me, you've got an association. Let us have something that the guys over here, we've got enough of meritorious guys coming out. The guys over here, they get a scholarship. Formalize a scholarship for maybe MLE, USA. We've got N number of guys sitting in the USA. We've got N number of guys sitting in the UK. Formulate a sort of scholarship so that you can fund his initial part. Pick up the best. Let people apply for it like in any other scholarship. Have a board to select it and do it. We have the funds between all of us. We have what my point is, invest in the human resources. Because it's a human resource which is going to make the name for the college like all you guys are doing. The second thing is research. See, the problem in NIRF is you have to have research. Here, Shomit told us, one of the first articles in, by an Indian in Lancet, one of the first articles by an Indian, BMJ, can we remember an article in BMJ over the last 50 years? A review article or original thing coming from Calcutta Medical College. We cannot. The problem is this mindset has to change. Can we somehow, whereas the clinical material is there for our observational study, for our RCT, wonderful clinical material is present in CalMed be it medicine, be it this thing, where you do not need that much of fund. Can the alumni associations, and especially the ex-student association, think over it and formulate an idea to inculcate the culture of research? I remember when I was in college as a student, we used to glorify people who had massive practices. Research was nowhere in the subconscious also. Krishna, do you agree with me? Absolutely agreed. Basically, we think, you know, practice was one of the benchmarks which we used to look. Yeah. Oh, go, yeah, how is doing well? Practice. Absolutely. Can I remember the class of Yeah, Anik will complete his lecture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. we'll let him yeah. wind up. It's almost two hours. <laughs> yeah, just after Anik, I'd like to say something, please. Just yeah. after Anik yeah, yeah. finishes. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 Anik, uh, you finish up the slides, please. Anik, you, you can give your concluding remarks. You don't have to open the slideshow. No, sir. sir my concluding, uh, concluding remarks is that, sir, uh, over the period of time, <coughs> people and students have been more busy with their studies and uh, the dynamics have been changed drastically. So I think, uh, and the cohorts of students, those who are coming in our college, uh, they are more uh, Kolkata center centered. Uh, they are coming from Niti which was, Niti which was introduced in 2013, 14, I, I think. And uh, after that period, the students. Oh. So one thing that is absorbed by everybody is that the need has made entry into medical colleges in a particular pattern. If yes. I get half a mark more than you, I'll choose the seat I want. So yes, the sir. difference between you and I is very limited, but I may yes, be sir. in Grant, you may be in Calcutta Medical College. I'm yes, just giving sir. an example. Yes. See, even Can I just... if, you see the, if you see the population of students, yes. it will be nearly the same almost everywhere. Yes, okay. Can I just add just yes. one of very, yes, very sir. small yes, points? Yeah. So what the first point is, uh, you asked both Dr. Radhakrishna and you that the ranking of medical college in the Indian perspective is down. First of all, who is doing the ranking and what kind of parameters are they taking into account? It's, it's, I, it's by Ministry of Education. 
Okay, I can tell you one thing, and this no, is I, where I, I no, this is one thing that I would probably disagree slightly with Kunalda on this. That I myself have published twice on the BMJ Kunalda, but right. from here, but now the, why? Uh, tell me. Yes, now that is a thing which we'll have to address. But if you look into the entire kind of, how do you rank a college? You rank by the achievements, by the research, by satisfaction, by everything. If you look into the pure academic bit of it, then I can tell you that Calcutta Medical College with all its academic achievements from all over the world will stand at the very, very top. But in the Indian perspective- an objective analysis today, CalMed is nowhere. And that's because Kunalda, yeah, that's because Kanalda, it factors into a number of other things. Student satisfaction, the number of jobs you are getting, the success you are achieving. So that way, yeah, and that I agree with you that it kind of is directly linked to infrastructure because our, our kids, they don't get the opportunity. For example, robotic surgery, Calcutta Medical College has, doesn't. So all these things, and that's infrastructure, that investment, that's a completely different so issue. Can, uh, but, but, yes, so this ranking to me, to me, this ranking, whatever parameters they use, I don't think they consider everything together. Okay, okay so I don't I, time for us to wind Baskar, it on, up. Baskar, on a later note, I just want to know from the uh, eminent faculty here is, is, do they have a favorite tea shop or a canteen where they spend time? Do they remember any of those yes. joints? Uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, please, please canteen, talk about it before we close. <laughs> The canteen is itself in the college premises, you understand, and everyone would get in there, play bridge, play cards, then we'll all add, we'll sit there and do our addas. Calcutta Bengalis, adda is one of the very important thing, you know, though I'm a South Indian, but my settled in Calcutta for five generations. Without an adda, nothing goes. Chai, adda, and so, uh, you know, samosas, uh, shingana, everything, whatever comes, we have, we'll order and we'll go on. <laughs> <laughs> Mishti Singha Mishti and, Singha and canteen oh, never so finally yeah. they have to <laughs> tell Dada on it please put on next person then only and canteen get. Bhaskaran is another place where romance unfolded certainly for me and, and, <laughs> canteen and was where I used to meet her who is now my wife place where we used to bunker classes and sit there and somebody will be giving proxies in the class you know no problem we are there we will that is one of the places where you will still go you know we all sit there and that is a place where we build you know rapport with seniors all will be in the batches talking Anik, do you do politics in the canteen oh yes yeah. sir of course of course but that canteen is also gone sir that canteen is also no good <laughs> that is a very um, important point it's not there now yeah then no, the, the, the old one is not is not there anymore. oh it's my still. god Oh my God. The campus is totally changed, sir. Over the last five years, the campus itself has totally changed. Okay. Yes. Now I did, I'll, I'll, write up, I, I'll just ask. I, I'll just ask each of the panelists to kindly just give one small brief statement as to what they actually learned by their association with the college. Jainta, I'll ask you first. What did the college give you? Yeah. What did the college give you? Is the spirit of comradeship the first thing I learned? Okay. And second thing, book loving. Lovely. How to read a book and how to think. These two things, precious things I learned from my college. Any any regrets? No, I don't have any regrets. Rather, regrets at the present moment seeing my college. Okay. Krishna Shankar, yeah. Right. I will say I learned uh, one very important thing is discipline, uh, especially from my teachers there. Uh, I, we had the surgical director, Professor P.K. Mukherjee, uh, Mukherjee is no, no more. You know, a man who was strictly to discipline, he'll be there exactly at 7.30, means 7.30 is there inside with us. He used to wear a, a bunny and on top of it with a apron. People think he was a ward boy sometimes. I remember an anecdote that he came, people could not put a ventron. Suddenly he came and he put a ventron and the patient said, Itna there's a doctor, bahut koshish kar rahe aap aakar kar diya, ward boy bahut achha hai. That is what, you know, the whole thing. So discipline, I still follow the discipline. I'm sure you have seen me. That is one thing which I learned from my college days how it is and i i think that is which gets on to me every day you know 
This is work is discipline and work is worship. And irrespective of anything, the patients, see, I got a free seat in medical college. I never even thought about a ca you know, capitation. We couldn't afford anything. And still today, after so long, I still feel the same thing with when patients come. So I don't think whether he can afford or not, whether I can give him the best whatever I can do from my side. And that is there in my mind, and I will never forget those days. Excellent. Thank you. Kunal. The college has given me everything. Any regrets? Made me this thing. But what I would like to highlight, you know, we have uh, people apologizing for a college. I also criticize it. Shumit, uh, Shumit, due apologies to you. But clinical medicine, what we learned, and subsequently when I was in AFMC along with you, we had a few guys from our college who joined surgery. I'm happy to say that that clinical sense is still there. What we learned then, that is still there with us. And I can recount in my life as a surgeon in the army, I can recount at least two lives was saved thanks to that clinical sense. We had nothing in a place I was in. There was no x-ray. There was no this thing as luck would have it. Couldn't even get a hemoglobin now. It was nothing strange for me because Sunday admissions, it was the same scene in uh, casualty block. So I put in a needle in the abdomen. There was blood in it. The fellow had a splenic rupture. I operated upon. End of story. This, if I had come out from, let's say, even all India Institute of Medical Sciences, I would have walked 200 times before going in like that. And I'm eternally grateful to my college for giving me that clinical sense. We had to diagnose pneumonia with our ears. We had to diagnose ascites or uh, hemoperitoneum with our hands. And that was that. And we did it and we carried on. And that gave us a confidence to function as doctors even without aid if needs be that's one the second i would like to highlight here as long as i was in college there was uh, someone talking of krishna i said talking about interreligious marriages religion was not an issue with us absolutely caste was not an issue with us it was after i entered helmet college that suddenly one day my one of my roommates in Fodia Chal, at Khane Yang, I'm like, oh, Allah, he was a student class I came to know after four years. And he said, I got the scholarship, so Chal Khane ke liye le jayenge tum no. So we never had any differences as far as caste, religion, language. True. Our non Bengali, my classmates, they still say, Yar, Kalmed ne bhul pa. It was because of that. An inclusiveness with the college gave. And then the capacity to develop as a human being, be it in arts, be it culture. My dramatics came from Calcutta Medical College, which has carried me. I'm sure Shankar's singing would have got a boost from there too, sometime. <laughs> so that's it. The college is there. And the last line of the Anthem, I cannot recollect, but it's Abar John Mohole Jano A Shirite Piri or something like that. MCH Tomar Book, Abar Eshe Piri. Absolutely. If That's I, in a next, thank you for this life in Medical College Hospital. Maybe in our next life also come on your steps. And I really believe, believe in that. The college has given me there are a lot of issues. Fine. The, Last point I would like to say, during my time as a house surgeon, as an intern, if a really poor person came, in fact, there was no question of giving a summon list or making anyone buy anything other than the private patients. True. So for the guy who is on the streets, this remains the best medical college in India. Excellent. Thank because you. I've been in other places, I've seen Bangalore Medical College, I've seen all in your institute, everywhere people have to buy. Whereas at our time, the most expensive medicines were MP, Gara, Metro. 
and we had to get it. If the super didn't give it to the house staff of the unit, he had it that day. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go so and find it. I know. Okay. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. That's all Anik. I have to say. <laughs> Anik, can you come on? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Me, for, for, what would be your uh, for, message? Yes, sir. For me, medical college, uh, I met people, I met friends who became family. And uh, I met I met uh, memories that I created memories that are everlasting, and uh, are a, a few regrets are that uh, sir due to politics it it uh, it also uh, enriched me uh, to live a different life to see life differently. But it also uh, some kind of it's it also narrowed me down because I have met. I could have met a lot of friends, but I couldn't do that due to politics. So it's my regret also, sir. That's all. Thank you. Uh, so Amit, I will ask you to give your concluding. You started, so you might as well end. Okay, so first of all, what the college has given me, you know, I completely agree with Join to, the, right. <laughs> join to the comradeship. Yes, agree with Kunalda completely, sense of inclusivity and the clinical eye. Kunalda, I remember. Uh, diagnosing unilateral proptosis from a distance and calling it a CML. I learned it from medical college. Just looking at the nails, onycholysis, chronic renal failure, silent. I still carry them. I'm an ear, ear guy, ear surgeon, but I still carry this. That's the clinical eye. But uh, the sense of belonging, Bhaskaran, you know, uh, the fact that I've been through, the, through those doors, that feeling with me will stay with me for the rest of for my life. And it has shaped me and everything, my life. So, yes. Um, as echoing what Kunanda has said, if it has to be again, I, I won't go to Harvard. I'll still keep on coming back to Calcutta Medical College. And that might sound very, very cliche and blase to you guys, but that's exactly how I feel. And I would be delighted if others feel the same way too. Regardless of the shortcomings, I'm not talking about shortcomings. It's the belonging. So no regrets, absolutely to Medical College. And once again, thanks to you, Bhaskaran and Dr. Radhakrishnan for arranging this because at least we have tried Thanks to. My Thanks for my side. Yeah, at, at, at least Thank we have you. tried yes, to really express. Excellent. At least we have tried to express the immense pride, the passion, and the love that we have for our Calcutta Medical College. You know, now I've got plenty of relatives from other institutions. They do not feel this pride, the pride that you feel for your college. So, And I feel more because I'm an anesthetist. You see, everything there, you know, apart from the, where it started, the second was in medical college. And I still, you know, I know my choice of, I took anesthesia by choice. And uh, I still love it. And I Yes, uh, I'll just uh, stop you there, Krishna. There's a chat from Murali Mohan. Do we have a name for CMCS? Yes, we do. It's called Matia. M-A-T-I-Y-A, and the reason being when it was first established, the common folk on the road for whom Western medicine was opened up couldn't pronounce medical college. Matia they called college. it Mitya College. From Mitya comes Matia, and that is the only history, right? So there's another university in South Africa called Stellenbosch who also called their alumni Matia. So be warned, there are two of us. Wow, very good. That's, that's thank you. Thank us. you so much. Thank I, I you. think it's an exceedingly yeah. passionate discussion about uh, alma mater, and that is exactly what I wanted to bring out. That people should love their college, and in turn, you get enormous happiness. And I'm sure it has helped you in many ways, as you all have said. And I'm exceedingly grateful to all of you for making this uh, exceedingly lovely, beautiful discussion. And I'm sure. Uh, you will set a benchmark for how other people will have to discuss their colleges. Thank you so much. And uh, oh, thank you yeah. for that our was Diva, who? So this is who? our traditional yeah. college. Tinte who? Tinte, who? Tinte. Who? Tinte. Yes. Medical who? college in Nome who? 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 Medical college in Nome who? Who? Medical who? 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 Thank you. Actually, I've seen Kunal there and all of a long time. So, when that's what they really yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Thank you. What Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Thank Radha Krishna. Because thank of you, we could all meet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Wonderful. And when Dr. Vaskaran asked me, I was really happy to share, you know, all these things. I never thought. He said, are you from Madhya? That's the first <laughs> thing I asked. I asked him. <laughs>
And Bhaskaran, I'd like to be in the Madras meet, please. I'm going to fight with my friend again. <laughs> please, Madras sir, is equally good. Sir, it's, it's very difficult to match your lecture, sir. I don't think any college can match. Madras is as good as us, I must no, confess. They should be a historian Roy. like you. This guy takes after V.C. Roy, a guy who has done both FRCS and uh, MRCP, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, forget about that, yeah. No, there are not many of us, but no, it, it happened. Very few, very few. And that's because, that's because I'm from Calcutta Medical College. Good. Had I been from any other college, no. <laughs> the only reason. Thank you, thank you. Bhaskaran will be back with Madras Medical College next. And that will be announced. He'll be very, very glad if all of you participate. Please, I will come. Yeah, I'm going to. I'll also be there. I'm going to argue with my Madras colleagues. Yes. No argument. It's just. The person who is going to give history talk is known to him. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.